on today's episode. This is one of my smallest soldering irons and also my oldest soldering iron as I was given it as a present I think on my 10th birthday. You can tell the age because it says made in England. It's a little Antex uh, 15 watt iron and very useful in, in confined spaces but obviously still with the cable. And here is the Haku T12 that I assembled recently and that's quite a small iron as well. well what we have for review today is an even smaller iron and it's rechargeable so it's it's wireless now this could be very handy again in the event that you're in a in a confined space and obviously having no cable has got to be an advantage there or indeed if you're into quads or uh, radio control like myself and you happen to arrive at the field and you've pulled a wire a little bit too too tight and it's broken off perhaps this is the solution out in the field just to be able to tack that back together. Let's take a closer look. What have we got? We have a box which is labelled Service Welding Flux. We can put that aside for the moment. We have obviously some, some solder. Whether it's leaded or unleaded, we don't know. My guess would be it's leaded. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the manufacturer, however you pronounce that, Zierdex, well known for their manufacture of uh, both solders and, and fluxes and indeed um, BGA masks, things like that. Obviously we have the charging lead, a little pop-up stand and the business end itself. Anybody that's uh, into the e-cigarettes or vaping world will immediately recognise this as just being a normal vaping type cell that there you put a your heating element and reservoir for the vaping mix will go on the top there. So clearly this has just been adapted um, to the role of a uh, soldering iron. So knowing that and knowing that this fitting, uh, you could either turn this into a, a vaping uh, battery or indeed any vaping battery into a soldering iron. There's a thought. Turning our attention to the battery, there is an adjustment at the end here which runs from 3.3 volts up to 4.8. I believe it's variable throughout the, the range there. To wake the guy up, we have to push the on button uh, for five times in quick succession. Now we can see that it, it's active. Now when we press the button, we get the 3.3 volts that we'd set on the, on the bottom here. Uh, if I just turn that around, 4.8 volts. So clearly there's a little regulator board in here, a little booster board, because I think there's just a single lithium ion cell in here. Uh, it's probably a little bit bigger than, than this guy, uh, maybe a 14650, something of that elk. Um, but these are not very easy to, to tear down any, any further. They don't just simply unscrew. I don't think you have to physically pull the end off of this, which I'm not prepared to do at this point. So it will be interesting to see whether the variable voltage uh, is just a way of increasing the time or whether it actually changes the, the, the temperature of the bit. Before we can test it as a, as a soldering iron, we need to make sure that it's, that it's charged up. Get the little red light to show that it's in its charging mode. Now, although it's on five volts, it's only drawing 100 milliamps. We will need to wait for the light, I guess, to turn green, and then it'll be fully charged, and we can test its soldering abilities. We've got the green light now. Obviously, there's now no current flowing. This iron is rated at eight watts, and we know that it's 4.8, so say five volts. Knowing the power and the voltage, we can work out what current it should be drawing. And that will be power over volts, 8 over 5, 1.6 amps. According to the specs, there's a 1.3 amp hour cell inside the device. Knowing the current and the voltage, we could work out the resistance of this little guy. 5 volts over 1.6 amps gives us a tad over 3 ohms. And we can verify that on our meter. 
ohms. So everything seems to stack up in that regard. I'm just going to hand tighten that on there. To start soldering, they recommend using the highest voltage to start with, so the little red line here on the 4.8 volts, and as we saw before, uh, five quick presses to activate it. Check and tin the tip. Now I'm going to be using my own solder because I'm familiar with how it's going to, to work. This is the traditional Ericsson Multicore 6040 tin lead mix. Usually with my temperature controlled irons, they're set to around 300 degrees Celsius. And there we go. Ah, should be using my fume extractor. So that's working well. This has a 10 second timeout, so if you hold the button down for more than 10 seconds, uh, it will automatically switch off. But we can see that it's uh, definitely getting hot. I wonder how hot. The iron is set to its highest voltage at uh, the 4.8 mark there. Dug out my little temperature probe and switch it on. So in the first 10 seconds it's gotten up to uh, nearly 200 degrees, which is probably the melting point of most solders. And in the second 10 seconds, we're up to 260. So at 30 seconds, we're at 300, which is where I usually set my irons. Let's see if it will go higher. 340. So we can see that it will get up to some much higher temperatures. However, I remember I've got a Weller uh, temperature controlled iron as well, and that uh, is usually set to around, well, I think it's 700F, it's a number 7, 700 Fahrenheit is around 370. What happens now if we reduce the voltage? So we'll take it right down to the 3.3 level. Now clearly, with lower voltage, there'll be less current and, and therefore less, less power. So I wouldn't expect it to get up to those temperatures. So the first 10 seconds it's up there to 230. So that would be okay. 250 after 20 seconds. 30 seconds. So clearly we can control the, the temperature. Let's just take it up is on the 4.3 volt setting. Two hundred and eighty. That was after twenty seconds. And there we are at uh, just about three hundred. So yes, in short, by varying the voltage, we can clearly change the temperature. And clearly at the lower voltage, it will last longer. I think I'm going to leave it set there, and let's try and do some real soldering. Let's see if we can tack this wire back on. Let's get the iron heated up. We know it's going to take at least 20 seconds. So now we're up to, to temperature. Let's tin the iron there. That's secure. Let's try another test. This is one of the little FR Sky XM Plus receivers, S Bus receiver. 
and it comes with a couple of headers that you can solder on. In this particular instance, I'm going to solder it to this little SBUS to PWM converter, um, as I want to put it in an older model. Let's see how we get on. Looking at the joints under the microscope here, they look pretty good to me. I don't think the results would have been any different uh, using my regular iron. Yeah, very pleased with that. I need to replace the batteries in this little power bank. That's to do with that, obviously, I need to remove the old wires. So this could be an interesting challenge. The iron is still set at the four point. 3 volt mark. So how about desoldering? can see there the uh, removed solder. So yes, even desoldering is possible. Let's tin the end of these wires now. Just uh, tin these pads having desoldered. Looking nice and bright. Again, under the microscope, we can see the result, and again, nice and shiny, a reasonable joint. And equally with the negative lead. So even on uh, a, well, what I consider to be quite a, a large job for such a small iron, I'm impressed. In fact, overall, I'm very impressed. I wasn't expecting this little guy to uh, to do as much as it has done, to be to be honest. I think it will be a worthwhile addition to it's certainly my field kit. And my thanks go to Banggood for supplying this for review, and I'm going to find it very useful, I think.